Are you looking for a new TV that is 55 inches wide and costs no more than $500? Then you're in the right place. That's what this video is all about. And we don't want to waste any time. Let's start right away. This time, the decision was really easy for me because there is a TV that I really like, especially in this price range, the Samsung 55-inch Class 4K Crystal UHD DU8000. This is a 55-inch TV and it currently costs $497.99. This meets our requirements. So let's take a closer look at the technical specifications. As the name suggests, this is an Ultra HD TV, which means we have 4K resolution, or in other words, this TV is capable of natively displaying 3840 by 2160 pixels. And don't worry, even if you don't have a current gaming PC or a console or a Blu-ray player that can play 4K content, it's not a problem because this TV has a built-in 4K upscaler, which means you can watch regular content on YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, and so on. And even if it's not in 4K resolution, it can simply be upscaled. Everything looks a bit sharper. Of course, it doesn't look as good as native 4K, real 4K, but it will definitely look better. What do you think? However, personally, I don't like using the 4K upscaler for video games because the artifacts become more noticeable. Maybe I'm a bit more sensitive to them than others. So the upscaler is good for movies, but I wouldn't use it for video games. Now let's move on to picture quality. And here it is really quite simple. If you watch SDR content, that is regular television, Netflix, and so on, then it is standard dynamic range content, and it looks great on this TV. And the relatively low brightness of 280 nits doesn't bother much either. You can still see everything clearly during the day. What is not so good is HDR content, that is high dynamic range content, where the colors look a bit more realistic and richer. It just doesn't look that good because only from 500 nits peak brightness can it really be well displayed. This TV with under 300 nits is not designed for that. Which doesn't mean that SDR content looks bad, it simply means that with HDR content, the difference is hardly noticeable. Now let's talk about the sound, and here it's also quite simple. The sound is surprisingly good, especially for this price range. The TV is capable of sounding loud enough without being tinny. But of course, it's not as good as a soundbar. I would say you don't need a soundbar. However, if you say that sound is really important to you and you want something truly good, then I recommend this one. It costs around $100 and then you'll have an even significantly better sound. But as mentioned, this is entirely optional. Now let's move on to the smart TV features. And here I make it really simple because this point is just completely irrelevant to me. The TVs are very similar to each other. They all run on some sort of Android based system and support the same apps such as Netflix, Disney Plus and so on. They hardly differ. They all run super smoothly at the beginning and then three to five years later, they start to become sluggish. They lag then the first apps are no longer supported. At least, that's my experience. In recent years, I've made it really simple. I just buy an Amazon 4K Max Fire TV stick when it's on sale, pay $40 for it, then I have no more headaches. My TV has a great picture, so I don't need a new TV just because my smart TV system starts to lag. So simply get an Amazon Fire TV stick when the day comes that the smart TV features and so on are slowly no longer sufficient for you. Good, it's time to talk about video games now. This TV is not intended for playing video games, but it can handle them well nonetheless. So if you want to play story driven games or single player games or anything on the Nintendo Switch, then this TV is perfect because it's a 4K TV with a relatively low response time of 8 milliseconds. That's good. But of course, the really good TVs achieve 1 millisecond, which can display 4K with 120 hertz, but they cost around $1,300, as we've seen with the LG C4, for example. And our Samsung TV can only display 60 hertz. 
Elden Ring, for example, can only be presented at 60 hertz. But if you say, man, I want to play Call of Duty 4K at 120 hertz, then you have to dig deeper into your pocket and get something like the LG C4. But that costs a good amount more. Now, let's move on to the super subjective topic, and that is design. And I have to confess, TVs nowadays all look very similar. They are quite slim. The bezels are also quite thin, which makes them always look rather simple, elegant, and of course, modern. This TV is, of course, not the most impressive in terms of quality, and the stand feet are not the most impressive either, but they are completely sufficient. Especially considering how much it costs, I find the build quality really well done. And I have to say, every TV you mount on the wall looks much, much better and it doesn't even show that it's rather like a budget TV. Therefore, my recommendation, get this wall mount, mount the TV on the wall, and then it looks much more impressive. When you have visitors, especially when the TV is quite large, you won't see much of a difference between a premium TV and a $500 TV. Come on. Now let's move on to the last point, which is the warranty. I know this is a very boring topic, especially with tech products, but it's always very important to me that the sale and shipping are handled by Amazon. So you can contact Amazon directly if something goes wrong. And that happens from time to time. That's why I made sure that this TV is sold and shipped by Amazon. If something happens, call them. At least in my past experiences, they usually provide you with a replacement product or simply refund your money and then you have no headaches as a customer. So if you're convinced, here's the QR code, just scan it, check the current price, under $500 is definitely a fair price. This has been Marty, and I'll be seeing you on the next video. Cheers!